We now realize that the surface temperature of Venus is 900 degrees. That's hotter than a baker's Ooh. oven. Lead would be molten at that temperature. Imagine for a moment the thrill of unearthing a treasure that's been hidden away for decades. A secret snapshot of an alien world. A visual diary etched with cosmic mysteries. Such is the sensation sparked by renowned physicist Michio Kaku's recent reveal of declassified photographs, never before seen images taken from Venus. These captivating visuals, relics of human ingenuity and courage, have journeyed back to us from a hauntingly beautiful but hostile environment of our neighboring planet. These aren't just any photographs, though. These are relics from the Soviet Union's ambitious Venera missions, a suite of exploratory endeavors that dared to pierce the veil of Venus's enigmatic facade. Venus is pretty much uh, like the, the, the biblical vision of hell today. These missions weren't merely ambitious. They were the vanguard of a daring new age of planetary exploration, hurtling through the abyss of space to decode the secrets of our celestial neighborhood. And now, we stand on the cusp of a thrilling journey into the past to retrace the footsteps of these audacious missions and unravel the secrets that they unearthed. Two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of NASA's New Horizon spacecraft. In the heat of the mid 20th century, a silent but feverish competition was unfolding between two world powers, the United States and the Soviet Union. This era, known as the Cold War, saw not only a race for global influence, but also a fervent struggle for supremacy beyond our planet's confines. This celestial contest, famously referred to as the Space Race, symbolized technological prowess, strategic superiority, and national pride, painting a grand theater where the skies were not the limit, but the stage. Caught between these geopolitical titans was an unassuming yet tantalizing world, Venus. Venus, Earth's closest planetary neighbor, shimmered in our skies as a beacon of mystery and potential. Its size and composition, strikingly similar to Earth's, attracted the keen eyes of astronomers and the grand designs of these spacefaring nations. For the Soviet Union in particular, Venus was more than a glowing jewel in the night sky. It was an opportunity to showcase their scientific capabilities, deepen our understanding of the cosmos, and perhaps even uncover clues about our place within the vast expanse of the universe. Thus, Venus transformed from a point of light in our night sky to a focal point of Cold War competition and cosmic curiosity. In the early 1960s, against the backdrop of the Cold War, the Soviet Union set its sights on the star-dusted skies, endeavoring to pioneer space exploration and bring the mysteries of Venus closer to home. Initiated by the Soviet Union, the Venera missions were a bold, groundbreaking effort aimed at unraveling the mysteries of our closest planetary neighbor. The Venera spacecraft was built not just to reach Venus, but to probe, study, and understand it in unprecedented ways. The Soviet Union knew the endeavor would be anything but simple. Venus is a planet infamous for its inhospitable conditions. It boasts an average surface temperature of about 467 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of Mercury, despite being further from the sun. Its atmosphere is a turbulent mix of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid clouds, presenting another barrier for any spacecraft. To top it off, the pressure on Venus's surface is about 92 times that of Earth, equivalent to the pressure nearly a kilometer deep in Earth's oceans. The first two Venera missions, Venera 1 and Venera 2, bore the brunt of these challenges. Launched in February 1961 and November 1965 respectively, both missions sought to reach Venus and relay crucial data back to Earth. However, they were met with significant hurdles. Venera 1 lost contact with mission control shortly after launch, and Venera 2, while successfully reaching Venus, failed to transmit any data back. These initial failures, while disappointing, were far from disheartening. Instead, they provided valuable lessons that would guide the future of interplanetary exploration. Rising from these setbacks, the Soviet Union made a significant breakthrough with Venera 3. Launched in November 1965, the same year as Venera 2, Venera 3 holds the distinction of being the first human-made object to impact another planet's surface. It crash-landed on Venus in March 1966, 
marking a major milestone in space exploration. Despite the fact that Venera 3 also lost contact before reaching Venus, some data transmission was achieved during its descent, providing humanity with its first direct insights into the Venusian atmosphere. Thus, the stage was set for the missions to come. The failures of the initial Venera missions weren't merely setbacks, but stepping stones, each one paving the way to a better understanding of the immense challenges of space exploration and fostering an unwavering determination to overcome them. With the lessons learned from Venera 1, 2, and 3, the Soviet Union was better equipped than ever to delve deeper into the secrets of Venus. In the early days of interplanetary exploration, the Soviet Union faced significant hurdles. Initial attempts to reach Venus, such as Venera 1 and 2, failed to deliver on their mission objectives due to a variety of technical problems. However, these initial stumbling blocks only bolstered the resolve of the Soviet Union scientists and engineers. They saw these failures not as an end, but as a unique opportunity to learn, iterate, and innovate. With the determination to push the boundaries of the unknown, the Soviet Union undertook critical adjustments to their spacecraft designs, both to endure the journey and survive the harsh conditions of Venus. One such improvement was the inclusion of a descent module, designed to withstand Venus's hostile atmosphere and facilitate the collection of crucial data during the descent and after landing on the planet's surface. These innovations bore fruit with the missions of Venera 4, 5, and 6. Each of these missions carried with them an array of scientific instruments designed to probe the atmospheric composition, temperature, pressure, and other parameters of Venus. Their data unveiled a world vastly different from our own, shaping our understanding of what makes a planet hospitable. One of the most groundbreaking findings from these missions was the discovery of the composition of Venus's atmosphere. Unlike Earth's nitrogen-oxygen rich air, Venus boasts an atmosphere almost entirely composed of carbon dioxide. This dense CO2-rich atmosphere creates a severe greenhouse effect trapping solar radiation and leading to surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead. This understanding helps scientists realize the powerful role atmospheres play in shaping a planet's climate and surface conditions. It also brought the catastrophic potential of the runaway greenhouse effect into sharp focus here on Earth, highlighting the urgent need for climate change mitigation. Further, Venera missions made another surprising revelation. Venus, unlike Earth, lacks a global magnetic field. On Earth, the magnetic field serves as a protective shield deflecting harmful solar radiation and playing a key role in maintaining our planet's habitability. The absence of such a field on Venus posed important questions about the conditions necessary for life as we know it. It was a stark reminder that while Venus might bear some similarities to Earth, it remains a world both alien and hostile, and the search for life, if it exists, wouldn't be straightforward. These discoveries, born out of the failures and triumphs of the Venera missions, not only provided a wealth of information about Venus, but also helped us understand the broader principles that govern planetary atmospheres and magnetic fields. They underscored the value of space exploration and how studying other worlds can give us insights into our own planet. The Soviet Union's tenacity in the face of adversity, coupled with its commitment to scientific innovation, forever changed our understanding of the celestial neighbor and set the stage for further explorations. In the quest to reveal the secrets of Venus, the Venera series missions made significant strides that indelibly marked the history of space exploration. It's crucial to acknowledge the significance of the later Venera missions, which emerged as the guiding light in the shadowy mysteries of Venus. Among these, Venera 7 and Venera 8 contributed significantly to our understanding of this tantalizingly enigmatic planet. Venera 7 was launched on August 17, 1970, and achieved something none had before. It successfully landed on Venus, making it the first spacecraft to achieve a soft landing on another planet. Yet this was not an unblemished victory. The lander, encased in a descent module, was intended to survive the landing and transmit data back to Earth. But upon landing, the module tipped over, compromising the signal transmission. Nevertheless, against all odds, for 23 minutes, it managed to send back invaluable data before finally succumbing to Venus's harsh environment. Although brief, 
Those 23 minutes brought us the first direct measurements of another planet's atmospheric conditions. The success of Venera 7, even with its hiccups, was a considerable achievement. It demonstrated the possibility of landing on Venus, a prospect that was at once exciting and daunting given the planet's extreme conditions. But it also emphasized the need for technological advancements, paving the way for Venera 8. Launched on March 27, 1972, Venera 8 was more advanced than its predecessors, equipped with a series of instruments designed specifically to withstand Venus's intense environment. Or about 465 degrees Celsius, and the 95% carbon dioxide atmosphere is 92 times heavier than what we experience on Earth. The lander housed a spectrometer, a photometer, a temperature and pressure gauge, and for the first time, a device to measure the light levels on the surface. The data obtained was a treasure trove of scientific knowledge. Venera 8 confirmed that the high surface temperatures on Venus were uniform, reaching up to 470 degrees Celsius, a temperature high enough to melt lead. The atmospheric pressure was measured to be 90 times that of Earth's at sea level, an observation echoing the findings from the Venera 7 mission. Building on this success, Venera 8 went a step further by providing the first ever color photographs of Venus's surface offering unprecedented visual insights into the planet's austere and desolate terrain. The images portrayed a world of striking yellows and oranges, a landscape made alien by its dense, carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere. It was a sight to behold, a visual feast of a place so hostile, yet so tantalizingly fascinating. These groundbreaking contributions of the Venera 7 and Venera 8 missions reshaped our understanding of Venus, and opened a new chapter in space exploration. They underscored the remarkable resilience of human innovation and perseverance. From the first successful soft landing on Venus to the advanced instrumentations that braved the harsh Venusian environment, these missions painted a detailed, colorful portrait of our celestial neighbor. Today, as we marvel at the recently declassified photos from these Venera missions, released by physicist Michio Kaku, we're reminded of these pivotal moments in our quest to explore the universe. We want to look maybe even for radio transmissions. Perhaps there's intelligent life there. Perhaps they've harnessed some kind of radio. So this... They serve as a testament to our relentless pursuit of knowledge, our desire to push boundaries, and our capacity to innovate in the face of challenges. They exemplified the spirit of human curiosity and the persistent quest to unravel the universe's mysteries. The revelations of the Venera missions provided unprecedented insights into not only Venus, but also to the deeper understanding of alien environments. The very conditions that tested the limits of the Venera probes, the suffocating atmospheric pressure, the caustic sulfuric clouds, and the punishing temperatures acted as irreplaceable lessons about what other planets may harbor and how they might behave. It helped us peer into the corners of our own solar system and beyond to seek out parallels, contrasts, and clues that would further human knowledge about the universe at large. An especially crucial outcome was the understanding of the formation of planetary magnetic fields. The Venera missions unveiled that Venus, unlike Earth, lacked a global magnetic field. This disparity raised intriguing questions about why our planetary neighbor, so similar in other respects, lacked a feature crucial for life on Earth. The absence of a magnetic field on Venus offered scientists a real-world scenario to study the effects, contributing to the broader understanding of what makes a planet habitable. It offered a natural laboratory for scientists to delve into the intricate balance of elements and conditions necessary for life to exist and thrive. But the intrigue of Venus didn't stop at its magnetic field or lack thereof. A topic of ongoing research and heated discussion in the scientific community came to the fore the potential presence of phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus. On Earth, phosphine is a gas usually associated with life. The detection of it on Venus set the scientific community ablaze with speculation and wonder. Could there be life on Venus, or at least the precursors to it? The meters up in the clouds are much more temperate and Earth-like. Well, the question about the presence of life on Venus could be answered in the next few decades. While the Venera missions did not find definitive signs of life, the potential phosphine detection hinted at the possibility that Venus might have held or could still hold some form of life. 
This hint has not only sparked curiosity, but also fueled the urge for further exploration of the enigmatic planet. The potential presence of phosphine re-emphasizes the necessity to probe deeper, to send more advanced technology to the sulfuric skies and infernal grounds of Venus. As we venture further into the space age, Venus calls us back, urging us to unlock the mysteries it still holds. Our journeys through the mysteries of Venus doesn't end with the historic Venera missions. Instead, it propels us forward into the future, to a mission that stands as a beacon of hope for scientists worldwide. The very spirit of exploration that animated the Venera missions still thrives today. It's evident in the plans of Roscosmos, Russia's space agency, for a remarkable endeavor, the Venera D mission. The Venera D mission, which translates as Venus D, stands as a testament to the undying human spirit of exploration and curiosity. This mission, slated for launch in 2029, is far more than a mere continuation of the Soviet Union's legacy. It's a fresh chapter, an attempt to push the boundaries of what we know about Venus and our universe. What does Venera D hope to achieve? The answers are as multifaceted as they are exciting. It aims to unravel more secrets about Venus's atmosphere, surface, and overall conditions. It's slated to gather more comprehensive data on the planet's geological activity and weather patterns. A particularly fascinating objective is the plan to study the planet's unique cloud system, a feature that has puzzled scientists for decades due to its unusual sulfuric acid composition. But perhaps the most significant goal of Venera D is its pursuit of an answer to a question that has long captivated the human imagination. Is there life on Venus? The presence of phosphine gas detected in Venus's atmosphere suggests potential biological activity. Venera D plans to investigate this mystery, providing crucial data that could fundamentally shift our understanding of life in the universe. The mission's significance stretches beyond the realm of space exploration. Venera D symbolizes the persistence of human curiosity and our collective desire to understand the cosmos. This mission carries the weight of expectations, but it also carries the hopes and dreams of scientists and space enthusiasts around the world. Its success could be a turning point, sparking a new era of space exploration and redefining our understanding of what it means to be alone in the universe. Looking into the haze of Venus, experts have found traces of phosphine, a possible indicator of life. This was found in the clouds of Venus. Standing at the cusp of a new decade in Venus exploration, we anticipate the revelations that the upcoming Venera D mission may offer. It promises to further our knowledge of our celestial neighbor, potentially redefining our understanding of planetary habitability and might even inch us closer to addressing the profound question, are we alone in this vast cosmos? The unveiling of the declassified Venera photographs brings to life the extraordinary journey of Soviet Venus exploration with its trials and triumphs. These images, capturing Venus's turbulent scorched landscape, provide more than mere geographic details. If this discovery is confirmed, it will surely be one of the most stunning insights into our universe that science has ever uncovered. They encapsulate the indomitable spirit of human innovation, tenacity, and our ceaseless pursuit of universal understanding. The unveiling of Venus by the Venera missions delivered unprecedented insights into this neighboring planet. Despite the punishing environment, the Venera probes stood resilient, beaming back crucial data about Venus's formidable atmosphere and surface conditions. They exposed a world dense with carbon dioxide, where temperatures could melt lead, and skies were blanketed with sulfuric acid clouds. The absence of a global magnetic field, a feature fundamental to Earth's habitability, provoked curiosity about Venus's unique planetary identity. The Venera missions did more than uncover Venus's harsh realities. They stimulated discourse about extraterrestrial life. The speculated detection of phosphine gas, an earthly biosignature, in Venus's atmosphere, further ignited this inquiry. Venus, Earth's evil twin. Its clouds made of battery acid. At 900 degrees, its surface hot enough to melt lead. Although the presence of phosphine doesn't definitively suggest life, it reiterates the imperative for continued exploration and encourages us to persistently question and seek. Venus's exploration has precipitated a paradigm shift in our perception of habitability. 
As we teeter on the possibility of discovering extraterrestrial life, our concept of life-supporting environments is evolving. The suggestion that life traces could exist on Venus, despite its severe conditions, urges us to broaden our search criteria for life, influencing our approach to future space explorations. The declassified Venera photographs serve as a poignant testament to our space exploration journey and the boundless cosmic expanse that awaits scrutiny. The echoes of these missions reverberate in our relentless pursuit to uncover the universe's enigmas. Regardless of whether we unearth life on Venus, our pursuit of knowledge underscores human curiosity and innovation's vast potential. We explore the cosmos not as conquerors, but as learners, striving to comprehend the infinite space that lies before us. The study of Venus, from the Venera missions to the forthcoming expeditions, remains a pivotal chapter in our ongoing celestial journey.